In the Transcriptomics 1 course, we covered key concepts needed to understand the analysis of gene expression data. We discussed how genes are expressed in the cell and what methods are available to detect and quantify expression. We also learned about sequencing and how to analyze this kind of data. In this video, we will review what we learned in the Transcriptomics 1 course. The central dogma of molecular biology dictates the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA and then to protein. In order to create proteins from these genes, RNA copies are made in the nucleus and will be subsequently transported into the cytosol, where proteins are built based on their sequences. In other words, for protein coding genes, RNA is made from DNA during a process called transcription, and protein is made from RNA during translation. There are different methods available for detecting and quantifying gene expression. Reverse transcription PCR, or RT-PCR, amplifies DNA based on two primer sequences framing the section of interest. Since PCR amplifies DNA and not RNA, RNA is first converted back to DNA prior to amplification. This is done via a process called reverse transcription. In nature, this process is carried out by retroviruses. In northern blotting, an RNA sample is digested into fragments that are separated by size in a gel using electrophoresis. They are then transferred to a membrane that can be probed to test for the presence of a hypothesized RNA transcript. Microarrays, like northern blots, are hybridization based. But in contrast to a northern blot, a microarray yields highly detailed information about the individual genes that have been transcribed. These signals are then detected, quantified, and used to create a digital image of the array. Finally, the digital image is used to identify the transcribed genes. Protein coding genes in genomic DNA contain large stretches of non-coding sequences called introns that are spliced out of the RNA transcript by an enzymatic complex called the spliceosome before it is passed to the ribosome for translation. The parts of the gene that remain in the mature, processed mRNA transcript are called exons. These are the parts that encode the amino acid sequences and will be used in protein production. Next generation sequencing technology allows for advanced studies of gene expression because it captures a snapshot of the whole transcriptome rather than a predetermined subset of genes, which was previously possible with RT-PCR and microarray technologies. Whole transcriptome sequencing provides a comprehensive view of the cellular transcriptional profile at any given biological moment and greatly enhances the power of RNA discovery methods. To study this data, we have to run processing pipelines that turn raw reads into structured data ready for analysis. NGS technology captures DNA sequences and generates digital data using several steps. First, RNA that was extracted from cells is converted into cDNA that is then sheared and placed into a flow cell. Inside the flow cell, cDNA fragments are amplified using bridge PCR amplification, and the flow cell is then inserted into the sequencer. This machine uses image analysis to capture each letter in the flow cell fragments by analyzing visual patterns and then converting them into a sequence of letters. Typically, NGS reads are between 30 and 300 base pairs long. They consist of a series of letters T, C, G, and A. Recall that a typical RNA-seq pipeline includes three main steps, preprocessing, mapping, and quantification. Pre-processing is needed to clean up our data by removing the adapters, trimming some of the reads, and removing the PCR duplicates. This is important because PCR amplification is not uniform across all reads. Then, we take the cleaned up read sequences to map them onto a reference, using a FASTA file for sequences of the genome and GTF files for annotation. Based on the quality of annotation, we can use various strategies for mapping. Once this step is complete, we have to quantify expression levels and give each expressed element a number. This process helps transform short raw reads that are in the FASTQ file into structured tables of gene or isoform expression that can be analyzed for expression patterns. Pre-processing steps typically include the PCR clean and trimomatic options. PCR clean removes all duplicated reads from raw sequencing data. The presence of duplicated reads from the polymerase chain reaction amplification can distort estimates of gene expression levels. The trimomatic algorithm cleans technical sequences, 
from a database which stores sequences known to be used as adapters in NGS experiments from raw sequencing data. The input formats for the module are FASTQ and FASTA raw sequencing reads. After cleaning PCR duplicates, the output is given in the same file format as the input. This new file contains reads from unwanted information for the next logical step. Cleaned up reads need to be mapped or aligned to a reference genome. This can be done by aligning the short reads to the full genome sequence or to the transcriptome. Several methods are available based on our objective. We can either map reads on the full genome sequence and manually detect exons as well as alternative splicing events by finding exon junctions, or we can use a known set of transcripts from the available GTF annotation file. Another option is to skip mapping altogether and use a database of known transcripts for alignment-free quantification. After the pre-processing and mapping steps, expression values for genes and isoforms are generated by a complex algorithm that seeks to detect statistically significant abundances of reads. These are quantified and displayed in an expression table. The counts of expression can be an FPKM or TPM. After the table of expression is prepared, we can analyze the table to study variability between samples or perform biological interpretation of specific genes or isoforms. In this course, we saw how normalization of exploratory analysis of multivariate data, called PCA, are used to understand differences between samples based on gene expression data. We also learn about the online resources that can be used to annotate a given set of genes of interest. David or the database for annotation, visualization, and integration discovery can help us link found variation and expression with function of genes or gene sets. Transcriptomics 1 was a detailed discussion of the role of transcription in cell function, methods of quantification for mRNA, an explanation of next generation sequencing, and a guide on how to analyze RNA-seq data. In this course, we also talked about RNA-seq bioinformatics pipelines which has its general steps of pre-processing, mapping, and quantification. Finally, we discuss the meaning of gene expression for sample variability before tying this to methods of biological interpretation. In our next course, Transcriptomics 2, we will focus on finding significant differences in gene expression patterns. We will start with differential gene expression and continue to look at typical challenges that can be resolved using other statistical methods. We will look at hypothesis testing, p-values, false discovery rate, and then use the DSEC2 method to run a differential gene expression analysis. Next, we will explore more complex variation by using factor regression analysis. As a result, you will learn how to detect obvious differences between preset groups, as well as expand on that idea to more subtle differences represented by factors that might interact with each other.